Hello once again out there to all my fellow Fix-It employees. Welcome back to another episode of How to Satisfactory. Now today's episode is going to be a little different. We're not actually going to be building anything per se or doing any tutorials. I really just kind of want to take this opportunity to go over some of the new stuff in Update 8 because if you haven't heard, Update 8 is now in Early Access, which is what the How to Satisfactory series is. Uh, we never actually jump away from early access into the experimental branch because since this is a tutorial and a walkthrough, most people who are just learning the game aren't going to be playing on experimental. The, um, some of you who uh, get a little bit more advanced will of course jump into experimental. So most of you have already been playing around with the, the new tech, the new stuff we have, the new uh, Unreal Engine 5 updates, everything that came in update 8 yesterday as of the time I'm recording this uh, most of you have probably already played this but a lot of the people who watch this series really only stick to early access so I really just want to kind of stay in this one branch of the game and since update 8 is finally just released into early access I think it's a great chance to kind of go over some of the new stuff for you guys who haven't played with it yet now, before we get started, some of you may be noticing the complete revamp that we've done here of our manufacturing plant, or at least our first manufacturing plant here. Uh, if you're wondering when this happened, you can go check out the last live stream I just did for How to Satisfactory. I uh, did it just the other day. Uh, it's episode 30.5, technically. Um, of course, now you guys can build the exterior and interior of the building any way you would prefer. Uh, you can build a huge box if you want. This is just what I did and if you want to see how I did it and maybe build along with it then check out that live stream definitely not necessary though but let's move on now one of the biggest changes in update 8 is something that you guys probably won't even notice unless you're just a huge satisfactory fan or a huge computer nut like I am and that is the upgrade to Unreal Engine 5 now on the surface this doesn't really do a whole lot but there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes in the game such as the nanite things which improves the uh, the visual effects like on rocks and stuff like that there's also world partitioning which means like I don't know if you guys ever noticed it or not but sometimes when you would be walking around the world you would go from one area into another area and the game would kind of lag a little bit um, I never really noticed it too much when I was playing, but it depends on the system that you're playing it on, my understanding that is. But anyway, what can happen with that is it's, it's world partitioning, and they've kind of fixed that, so you shouldn't see that lag moving from one area into another area. Because previously, the game, like the entire map, was just partitioned off into, we'll call it tiles. If you guys have ever played CD Skylines, you know how the tiles work in that, where you have different sections of the map. Well, that's kind of how this works in Satisfactory. But Unreal Engine 5 improves upon that, and that's what another one of the things that they've done here with the game. Something else that got an upgrade in Update 8 is the vehicle physics and sound. They got a complete overhaul. So Unreal Engine 5 comes with a new physics simulation that's called Chaos. Most of you don't need to know that, but essentially what it is is they've reworked the vehicles to use the different kind of physics things so no longer if you're driving say a tractor or one of the buggies or something on a foundation uh, you know a road essentially uh, you won't get that bouncing effect also some of the sounds have been reworked as well and not just on the actual vehicles either I feel like I'm noticing some difference in sounds on other things in the game as well uh, especially just kind of walking around when you have the blade runners on I definitely feel like I hear more of a clinky kind of Iron Man kind of walk in a way. Yeah, definitely more robotic walk. There's also been a step up in upscaling and anti-aliasing, which if you don't know what that is, um, you're obviously not a like graphics card or a PC nerd like I am. Or, but essentially it just means there's improvements in the graphics and the way that they are drawn in the game and worked in the game. So yeah, you're gonna get much better quality of graphics in the game. You just gotta go into your options and set what works for you depending on your system. 
They've also implemented, well, sort of implemented, a new lighting system in the game called Lumen. They're not officially supporting it, but it is in the game, and you can turn it on or off. Personally, I turned it on earlier, and I noticed the entire thing, the entire factory here, just got so dark that I couldn't see anything that was going on, which could be improved by just placing some lights around the building. And that's something I might do a little later in this video, just to kind of show you guys what it will look like. I'll even show you how to turn it on um, and if you decide you want to use it, it is very taxing on a system, so you may not want to use it, but I think it definitely is a huge improvement, and I really like it, uh, but we're going to need some lights around the factory to get that to work. And not just when actually Lumen is on either, like even when I've got Lumen off right now, and I'm noticing a huge improvement, like I pop in the colors of the game too. Like previously, I couldn't really tell that those were blue up there without really looking and knowing that I actually painted those blue but as soon as I launched the game here in update 8 they just those colors just popped and I feel like everything is just much smoother now too as far as like the graphics I, I'm getting 60 frames a second on my system and I'm pretty happy with that there's also been a huge change to the actual just visuals in the game in general. You'll notice uh, the vista that we have here surrounding the world so no longer does this seem like just an island that we're on and you can just see for miles and there's really not much of a horizon. Now you can see that they've got this nice little kind of mountainous range over there which makes the world feel more like a world per se. The Titan Forest and the Red Jungle also received significant overhauls for foliage, visual, sound effects, lighting, things like that. Uh, and a lot more of the areas just received you know, a little bit of polish here and there. Uh, there wasn't any changes to resource nodes or any major terrain changes though, so anywhere you've built your factory should pretty much be safe. And speaking of safe, we have two new types of enemies in the game. Well, not really types, more like versions of enemies. The hogs have received a couple of upgraded versions of themselves. This is the cliff hog. Now the cliff hog is higher health, damage, size, and speed compared to the alpha hog. Uh, he also has a new attack. Not only does they have the basic hog attack, but they can also throw rocks and this plow attack that you see here, which instead of just hitting you and stopping, they literally will just come right at you nonstop. The other new enemy type is the nuclear hog. Now, these guys, as their namesake says, are radioactive. So just being around them alone is dangerous enough. Same as the cliff hog. They are faster, bigger, more damaged, everything like that. They also have the same attacks for the most part as the cliff hogs. They can throw those rocks. They can do that plow attack, the basic charge attack of the hogs. These guys are just extremely aggressive. So if you see these, I would try to stay away. So you guys might want to be wary of those, unless you just have the animals, uh, or the creatures I should say, set to passive, in which case, that won't really matter. They've also updated placements of creatures, hazards, and collectibles in many areas of the world, so you may want to look out for changes on that as well. One thing I was kind of hoping for was when they actually like updated the game, and since the foliage and stuff came back, I know when they updated the experimental branch, all of the collectibles came back as well, such as the power slugs, and I was able to get like double the power slugs out of that. So all the ones I'd previously collected were back again, and I was able to collect those again. I'm not seeing that here in the early access branch, so unfortunately it doesn't seem like we lucked out on that. Now I think I've talked about every single little change in the world and like behind the scenes, all the visual stuff, things like that. So let's get into something that I think is one of the biggest improvements in update 8 for a builder and that is the ability to nudge things so i'm going to grab just a lot of not that i want to grab here i want to grab one of these just a conveyor splitter right now previously when placing it down you could only when you moved it moved with you right like this so now what you can do is when you place it down press the h key and what that does is that locks it in place so now you see it's there it's not placed yet but I can move around and kind of look at how I want it. Not only that, but I can now use the arrow keys to move it around where I want it to get that exact placement. Now I've been messing around with this today and I gotta say, I really, really love this. This is a great new feature and it's going to help in building things more precise so much easier because I'll be able to kind of move back, get a good look at exactly the placement before placing it down and then place the item 
without having to be like, oh man, I messed up. It doesn't like match back here or it doesn't fit over here or I put it too close to that. Now I can actually get a good look all the way around it before placing that item. A couple of other building improvements and tool things that they've added are things having to do with blueprints and dismantling. So those, I don't, I'm not really gonna get into those in this specific video because we haven't really talked about blueprints at all. We've not used blueprints any during the how-to series. I think I need to do an entire episode just about that, but I'm pretty sure you guys probably at this point know a lot about the blueprints, but if you guys want me to do a how-to satisfactory video on blueprints, let me know in the comments down below and we'll talk about that. I'll do a whole episode devoted to it. Uh, and then maybe we'll try to start doing more uh, blueprint stuff in the series. Um, I do plan on using that when we go to the next how-to series, how-to series 2.0, so to speak. Like once we restart, I will be doing much more with blueprints and I'll even be offering those blueprints up for my Patreon members and stuff to be able to download for themselves and use. So yeah. But again, if you guys do want to see an episode devoted to the blueprints, then again, just let me know in the comments down below and I will see what I can do to oblige you on that. Another new feature that's been added that has nothing to do with blueprints though that I can show you is really handy and that is the dismantle feature. So normally, let's go ahead and bring up our fix it tool. Now let's say I want to mass disassemble things, right? I would just hold down left control and then I would just start like moving my mouse over top of stuff that I want to dismantle, right? Now that's fine if I want to get like all of this, right? But let's say I've messed up and I just placed say these assemblers in the wrong spot. And I just want to take out those. I don't want to do anything with the floors or anything like that, which sometimes will happen. You might accidentally like mouse over something and didn't realize it. And then now you've got to rebuild all that back. Well, if we bring up our fix-it tool again, let's go ahead and point at the assembler there. Now I'm going to hold down left control and then I'm going to hit G. Now you will see there right under where it says the maximum dis dismantle limit it says dismantle filter assembler so now as you can see as i move over it's only grabbing the assemblers and nothing else not the power cables not the walls not the floors nothing except those assemblers and that is a really neat new feature that i really like so now i can just dismantle those and that's it or for example say i just want to delete these catwalks and nothing else but these catwalks again fix it tool hold down left control Hit G while I'm hovering over top of what I want to be the filter. And then as you can see, it's only getting those catwalks. It's not, it's only the straight catwalk pieces too. See how it's not getting the corners, it's not getting the stairs, any of the other ones, only the pieces that are that specific piece. I think that's just a great new quality of life thing that would really be helpful to building. There's also been an improvement to building conveyor belts and pipes. So previously, if I wanted to just say, I've you know not connected belt to anything just yet. I just wanted to build, say, a conveyor belt that runs this way and have it not connected to another belt. I would have to, like before, what I would have to do is build a conveyor pole first, place that down, and then add the conveyor belt to that and run it where I wanted it to go, right? That's the way we used to have to do it. No longer do we need to do that. Now, that step is no longer necessary. We can just go ahead and grab a conveyor belt by itself, place it down, pop it down once, and then you can see we can raise it up and down right there as well, and then hit it a second time to be able to turn it the way we want it. So, like that. And now our conveyor belt is placed here, just willy-nilly, doesn't matter, it's good. And like I said, we can also do the same thing with pipes too, not just conveyor belts. I can just move these around just like that, have it go where I want it to go. There's also a couple pieces of equipment that got significant upgrades. And one of those is something I have never really used. I never saw a need for. I think I've only ever built it or made it like one time the entire time I've played Satisfactory. And that's the parachute. Now you would think a parachute, that's awesome. Why have we never heard about this? Or why don't you use it? Well, that's because before update eight, it was always something that you had to, it was like a one time use thing. So every time you needed one, you would have to build it again and again and again and again, which made sense, you know, if you're thinking realistically, but in game sense, I just didn't want that hassle. I would just fall and just hope I lived. Uh, but 
The parachute can be really handy now because it's no longer just a one-time use thing. In order to get to the parachute, we're going to come over here to the MAM research machine. We're going to go down to Mycelia, and it can be unlocked right here in this chart. So we're just going to go ahead and grab that. And you know what? While we're here under Mycelia, let's go ahead and get the expanded tool belt too, if you guys haven't gotten that yet. That's going to add an extra hand slot, and we're going to need that in a moment. Then we're going to come down here to the equipment workshop and it should be in here. Yep, right there. Parachute. Let's go ahead and make one of those guys. Go into our inventory and we should be able to attach it to the back. And that is our first back attachment. Another piece of equipment that got an upgrade is the zip line. So we've not actually unlocked this either. And I actually like the zip line quite a bit. I think it's a ton of fun. It's a great way to get around. We've just never unlocked it in the game, or at least I have it in the how to tutorials so far because, well, we just never really had time. But you can find this thing under Caterium right there. And you will need about, looks like 50 things of cable and about 100 quick wire. So let's go ahead and unlock that guy. We'll pop back down here to the workshop again, and the zip line should be right here under tools. It is going to require a Xeno Zapper, about 30 quick wire, three iron rods, and looks like 10 cable. All right, not a problem. We'll go ahead and craft that baby. Then we can just go ahead and take the zip line, equip it into our new hand slot we just got a second ago. Now, I actually really love the zip line because it makes moving around the map a lot quicker, in my opinion, especially if you don't have the jetpack yet. In fact, even with the jetpack, I still think it's just a faster mode of transportation. The caveat to that is that you do actually need to have power lines to where you're going. So, like this. Now, the improvement is that as you can hold down shift and stuff, you can move around a lot faster. So, the longer you're actually on it, then the faster you'll move. Now this will be a lot more evident once I actually place down the huge power towers, which we'll talk about in just a moment. All right, so back to the parachute. Now, as I said before, it's no longer a one-time use thing. So once you made it, you used it, then you had to make another, etc. That's That's completely a thing of the past now. It makes the parachute so much more useful now that you can actually just make it once, strap it on, and you're good to go especially since there's multiple equipment slots now after the last update and then you can have like the blade runners the parachute and all kinds of other stuff that you want to use the gas mask you got like three things right there which are incredibly incredibly useful just for like getting around the map and keeping yourself safe so how does the parachute work all right once you have it strapped on your back basically equipped what you want to do is, if you are in mid-air, you just hit your space bar, like jumping in mid-air. That's, that's basically how it works. And I'm going to demonstrate this right now from the cliff overlooking our power down there. So I'm just going to jump off, and then once I'm falling, I just hit space bar, and voila. Now something else that the developers have done is they've made the parachute much more maneuverable. Um, I've never, again, like I said before, I don't never really used it before, so I can't say exactly how it worked before, but, uh, yeah, this thing is pretty useful to me. I can, like, go wherever I want. I can hold shift bar down and move a little quicker, it seems, or maybe not, yeah, yeah, definitely, I can definitely move a little quicker, and I can just kind of, I think if there was a train going through here, I would be able to, like, Ethan Hunt, Mission Impossible, that stuff, and just land right on the train. Pretty sure that would work. Now there's also been some upgrades to the jetpacks as well and how they work, but since we haven't unlocked the jetpack yet in the How To Satisfactory series, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about it. For now, I'm just going to say that different fuel types have different effects on how it works. Um, for example, the regular fuel will get you the normal kind of flight. If you're using turbo fuel, you will fly faster. And liquid fuel, liquid biofuel, lets you stay in the air longer. So it lasts longer than what regular fuel does. But we'll talk about that more in a different episode once we actually get to the point where we're unlocking the jetpack and using it. Now, there are also new additions in the game as well, and that is the power towers, which I briefly mentioned earlier. So the way we're going to get to those is we're going to go over to our hub terminal, 
and I believe it's in, yes, uh, tier four, which we should already have unlocked, expanded power infrastructure. Uh, you can now get the power storage in this one. You can get power towers and power tower platforms. So these basically do the exact same thing, just one has a platform on it, one doesn't. I'll show you here in just a moment. Looks like we're gonna need a thousand wire and a hundred steel beams, which I have, and a hundred of the modular frames. So I'll just pop down here to storage real quick, grab what I need, come back up here to our hub terminal, and then pop all that in there, like so. Push that big red button, and now we have unlocked those power towers. So we already had power storage before. In fact, we used it over at the coal power plant. So I think what's happened here is they've moved it into a new category, uh, along with the towers and the tower platforms. So let's take a look at these guys here real quick. In order to build one, you are going to need, it looks like 10 concrete, 20 wire, and 20 steel beams. So make sure you have some of that on you, and then you can just place these down. Now, so you can already see how much bigger these things are than regular power poles. And that's because these are used for running power between longer distances, such as say from our power plant over here to our main factory, or from the power plant down to the oil field that we have down there. In order to build one, you're going to need 20 steel beams, 20 wire, and 10 concrete. That's not that bad, actually. I've, I figured they would need, like, modular frames or something. But no, this, this is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and plop one down right there. And then let's jump over here, and let's take a better look at it. So as I said, we have two different versions of these towers. We have one with a platform, like I'm standing on now, and then the ladder here. And then there's also one which we can just copy put it over here and then hit E and change it over to one without the actual platform on it. So let's say we have a very, very long cable run that we need to do to get electricity from one place to another and we wanna dot the landscape with these guys. All you gotta do is choose your power cable, connect it to one of these. Now, as you can see, that is much further than a normal power pole would be able to run. I think that's a distance of like three power poles maybe right there. I'm very curious about exactly how far these things actually will go though. I wonder how far, well, that's about as far as I can get it from here, at least in standing on this viewpoint. Uh, I wonder if I can get it further if I just run along the land and connect it, but that's something to try out later. I'm just gonna go ahead and place one down. So that's as far as I could run that while actually being able to stand on the other power pole. But can it go further? If I delete the power cables and then connect a power cable onto this once again here, like so, how far can I get it just by running over here? All right, so here is where it placed it the first time just from standing there. Can I go further? Nope, it doesn't look like I can. So that's uh, maybe just a little bit more from there. Okay, that's still a pretty good distance though. Now let's say I had something over here I wanted to run power to. I don't know, maybe like a truck station or something like that. And I needed to get the power from this over to that truck station. What I would do is then connect right here on this connection down here on the bottom. And then from there, I can just run it over where I need it to. And with any luck, I can get it to come right through that little hole right there. Uh, at least that makes it look better. Obviously, the line will go through anything and even go through the side of that like metal girder right there. But if you want to make it look good, you can always use those triangular holes right there. And then from there, I can run that to whatever I need to. So that's how the tower platforms work. We can just go ahead and delete these now since we're no longer using these. Now let's go ahead and put these guys into practical use. I am here at our coal factory right down here on the end. And I'm just gonna kind of extend this foundation out right here to about eh, three. And then I'm gonna go in and we'll grab a, let's do the platform and I'm gonna place it with the ladder facing us here. And I wanna get that kind of centered up right there. So what I'll do is I'll hit H and then I'll just kind of nudge it into place. That looks pretty centered to me. How's that look? Let's see. I think that'll work just fine right there. And here you'll see, I cannot connect this cable from the end of here, that's like these lines, up to the actual top of this. Only the towers will connect to the other towers up there. I have to connect it to the one down there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and connect that one. And then, you know what? I'll go ahead and connect this one up here as well just like that that should work just fine now since all of this factory is actually connected together there's no real point in connecting both of them to the tower but i think it just looks a little better 
with our first power tower placed down there, I've came up here to the top of the cliff and then I'm just going to grab a cable. I'm going to connect it to that tower like so. And I'm just gonna bring it up here and then just kind of get it to kind of average out the best I can. Now, right now, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. If I really wanted to make it like completely straight, I would use foundations and just kind of build them up until I think it's perfect. But I think for now, this will do. Let's see. Yes, yes, that actually is pretty close to being straight. Uh, straight enough anyway, I will take that. Now I'm just gonna climb up on top of this tower. Again, we're going to grab a power line and I'm gonna see how far I can take this. Let's see, so normally, I think our line is down that way. So what I could do is just find the right path to take this down through here. And from here, I got too many trees in the way, so I can't really see what I'm doing. So I think I'm just gonna kind of walk this down through here and then figure out where we can place it. I personally think I kind of like it like right here on this kind of hill right there, coming down through there. That's still a pretty good distance down through there. And then I'm just gonna connect this one on down through here. There's this little cliffside kind of right here. I think that works pretty good spot. I want to put it right there. And I think I'm just going to temporarily place our last power tower right here on this cliff that's overlooking this limestone and our iron miners right there. I think that's going to be a good spot for that. From there, I can then connect a cable from the bottom. From there, all the way down to here. And then we no longer need that cable coming in because all the power is going to be coming through these lines down through here. I can also connect the power that's running down to our truck station and our manufacturing plant over there. I can just run that from here. Instead of having it go that direction, we can just have it go this direction and connect it right up to that tower right there. And then we don't need that anymore. All right, I've now removed all of our regular power cables that we had running up the side of the hill down through here since we don't need them with the power towers. I think that's much cleaner looking and I just love how those look. That This is, other than maybe the nudging by moving things around and being able to see where they go, I think the power towers are probably my favorite new thing about update eight. So there is one other thing that's been added to the game having to do with power and that's priority power switches. These things are pretty neat but I'm gonna admit that I don't really know all about them just yet. So I don't want to have to do like a breakdown or, or talk about them just yet if I don't really understand them 100% yet. So I'm gonna play around with them and then in a later episode we'll come back and we'll talk about those. But they do exist, they're pretty neat and they allow you to do grids of power circuits kind of where you can set priority to those. So like if you're losing power, you can say, oh, we'll set this section off first before these other sections and have them work in like, you know, like shut this one down first, shut this one down next after that. We want to try to keep this one on for as long as possible. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I just really need to kind of learn it a little better, but we'll come back to that in another episode. From way up here in the sky, you can really get a great bird's eye view of just how much better the power towers make at running electricity across such a vast distance. It's, it's really much nicer. Oh, and if you're wondering how it is that I actually got up here, well, it's not a mod. It's something that's now included in the game. So now there's an entirely new set of awesome options that you can play around with, but to get to them is a little tricky, so I'm going to tell you how. So let's say you want to load up one of your previous game saves and you want to enable these options. What you're going to do is go to load and then go to your game directory and then find one of these. Now, if you've already enabled it, you're not going to see it. But let's go back here to how to episode 30. Before I just go ahead and click load game over here, right underneath of that is a thing that says enable advanced game settings. You want to click that and then choose load game. Now you're going to get a pop-up screen that's going to tell you about this. You're about to load your save with advanced game settings enabled. Please note that editing these settings is a one-way action. You will not be able to switch back to the default version of the game other than reloading a previous save. All players in this session will have access to these settings once activated. So if you're playing multiplayer, then they'll have that option. So if you want to proceed, then just go ahead and click confirm. Now, if you are starting a brand new game and you want to go ahead and get to those options, then that is going to be right underneath of start game. You're going to see a thing that says advanced game settings. So that's going to be there if you're starting a new game. So let's take a look at the advanced game settings that we have. So there's gameplay, creatures, and progression. 
If we go into gameplay, so the first one we have is no power. That basically means you don't need power at all in the game. You don't have to worry with it. You don't have to worry about like biomass or any of that. You don't even have to connect power lines to anything. Everything just runs on its own like magic. Next, we have the no unlock cost. This basically means in order to get to milestones and stuff, you don't have to pay those unlock costs. I'm pretty sure you still have to go to the hub and like choose it to unlock it, but you don't need to have like cable or any of the like concrete or any of that stuff that you're going to need normally in order to unlock that milestone. It, it's just there. Unlock alternate recipes instantly. Now, let's say you don't want to have to hunt for hard drives. Now, I personally enjoy doing it. I think it's a fun part of the game. I like knowing you know randomly what i might get out of a hard drive it's, it's kind of fun in its own little way but if you don't want to fool with that at all you can unlock them instantly just put a check mark right there and all the alternate recipes are going to be there for you to choose at the very beginning or at least wherever you are in the game now now this one is something that is pretty cool keep inventory so previously in satisfactory whenever you died everything left so you just had like a box left over you had to go back and retrieve that box in order to get all of your stuff now you keep your equipment by default so your xeno zappers your blade runners all that stuff you get to keep that on if you die normally by default however if you don't like that or you want to change it to another way you can come in here to advanced game options and you can choose keep your equipment like it is now Keep nothing, which is the way it was before, so then you have to go back and retrieve everything, or keep everything. And this basically means if you die and you reset, well, you still have everything that you have when you died is already on your body. You don't have to go back to get the box of stuff at all. All the materials you collected, everything right there at your fingertips. Another option here is give items. You can select items to give to yourself. Now let's say you needed a bunch of iron ingots or something like that. Well, you can just come in here to iron ingots and you can tell it how many you want. Say 40. Give me 40 iron ingots. Well, then you hit confirm. And then when you go back into the game, you're going to have 40 iron ingots. So you can do that with any of the items in the game there. The next thing on the list is no build cost. This means when you go to build something, you don't need the materials to build it at all. You can just build it straight up. You don't need the concrete, you don't need the iron rods, you don't need the metal plates, the reinforced iron plates, you don't need any of that stuff. You can just choose where you want to build it, put it down. Then there's God Mode. This basically makes you invincible. Like, you, you cannot die in the game. It, falling, uh, like anything that would give you damage, it just won't kill you. And then there's the one that I actually have enabled right now, which is Flight Mode. Now, this one... I kind of like it because it gets me, as a YouTuber, I can get bird's eye views, I can make thumbnails and stuff quicker, things of that nature. So this one works for me. However, I actually don't recommend playing with this on because I feel like it is a bit of a cheat. So if you're just playing the game normally, then you wouldn't want flight mode because it just it makes you seem more powerful than what you should normally be in the game before you actually get the jetpack. Uh, it gives you jetpack abilities without needing fuel or anything like that. And to me, that is kind of a cheat. I still use it though, like I said, for YouTube, just so I can get things finished on time for like when I have to get a video done or something like that, or I will use it to take thumbnails and stuff. So for me, I use it, uh, but for the normal player, I just feel like it is cheating. You may feel differently though, and if you want to go ahead and use that, then by all means, click it on. Now we're going to move on to creatures. So this one is disable arachnid creatures. And this basically disables the spiders from like actual spawning at all. Now previously there was a arachnophobia mode which turns the spiders into cats. And some people consider those to be even creepier than the actual spiders. Uh, if you don't want either one of those you can come in here and just disable that altogether. Last, we have progression. In here, we have set game phase. This lets you set it to different phases. Like, I'm currently in phase two right now. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and go into phase three, or I can unlock all the phases. There's unlock all the tiers. So if you wanted to unlock every single tier in the game and just have it ready to go, you could do that. You can unlock all the research in the MAM with this option. No longer have to go in and like 
research stuff and wait five minutes and do all that. You can just do it here just by clicking that. And then last, there is the awesome shop. So you can unlock everything from the awesome shop. If you don't want to have to deal with tickets and then like turning the tickets in, collecting the tickets, doing all that stuff, you can just click that. Now, again, I do feel like most of this stuff is cheating. Um, if you're like pretty good with the game, you've been playing a game for a while, then you just don't want to mess with any of this. Just, you just want to be creative in it. Then these are great things to have for that reason. Uh, I still recommend playing the game without these though, because it just, I feel like these just take the fun out of the game. However, you guys do you, however you want to do it, the option is there for you now without having to use mods to do any of this stuff. All right, now that's everything under advanced game settings, but there is something I want to go back to that I discussed previously in this video that I said I would come back and tell you how to turn it on and off. It's a visual upgrade to the game called Lumen. It's global illumination is what they call it, and it allows advanced lighting techniques, which are really pretty cool. Now, previously I said that when I tried this the first time here in this specific factory, it was just way too dark and I couldn't see anything. As you can see here, I've been toying around with a little bit of lighting. I've been using the signs to make neon lights that go down through there. I've also been kind of making my own like ceiling lights down through here as well. So this is what it looks like without Lumen, but let's go ahead and turn that on. And the way you do this is you first go into regular settings. So let's go to options and then you're going to go up to video and you're going to scroll all the way down here till you find here it is down at the bottom global illumination now you can see it's set to off right now i'm going to go ahead and turn this all the way up it's got a couple of different settings it's got medium and it's got high there's really nothing past high so i'm going to turn it on to the highest ability i'm going to hit apply confirm and then we're come back into this and look at this look at how beautiful this neon looks now. Isn't this just gorgeous? It does really look fantastic and I really like this. Now as I said, this is taxing on a lot of systems. So if you've got a system that can handle it, I've got a 12700K now with a 3080 Ti. It just, it makes this whole factory just pop. Those ceiling lights, custom ceiling lights I've made just look amazing. That green neon up here looks fantastic as well. I really like this. And uh, as I did promise earlier in the video, that's how you actually turn that on if you want to use it. All right, guys, that has been my look at everything that is new with Update 8 here in Satisfactory. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope you've learned some new things and that you can take into your own world and mess around with and play around with. If there's anything you guys want to see me go into more detail on or if there's anything that I missed, let me know in the comments below. That way we can kind of take a look at that in another video sometime. Your feedback is always appreciated. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube to send this out to other people and then they may actually like it as well and it gets the word out about the series and the channel. And if you're a fan of Satisfactory or other creative games such as City Skylines, Planet Coaster, things where we can build our own little worlds in, then by all means click that subscribe button because that's the stuff you're going to get here on this channel. Taking a look at my statistics, I can see that only about 22% of my viewers are actually subscribed. 78% of you are not, so hit that subscribe button. Whoa, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. We can't end this video without talking about one other thing. Something that I consider to be the most important, best, fantastic addition to Update 8. Now, the other stuff that I've mentioned is pretty cool. The ability to nudge things over makes building a lot easier. The filter system's pretty cool. Lumen's pretty awesome. But there's just one thing that stands out the most in this whole update, and that is the ability to blow these damn things up. Yes, that's right. The gas rocks are now destructible. We can totally get rid of these, and that's what we're gonna do real quick. So what I'm gonna do is throw a bunch of explosives all over every single one of these rocks. Yes, these things have been a bane in my existence since the very beginning of this tutorial series, and you know what? It's time for them to go in the most glorious way ever. Alright, that made me extremely happy. Uh, one thing I am seeing though is that there is some leftover like effects still happening here from where they used to be. Um, hopefully once we like exit the game 
and then reload it, then maybe that will fix that. Uh, it could just be a bug. But the main important thing is, though, the rocks are gone. No more gas. And that, that is fantastic. And that's going to do it wherever you guys are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I will see you in the next video.